Bzzz. Ow, that hurt. You knew I was going to do that, didn't you, Beth? <laughs> I did. I almost joined in, but, but I'm a queen didn't. bee. I don't do nothing. <laughs> All right, everyone. Welcome, Nate and Beth, coming your way once again to continue our reviews of Friday the 13th, the series. In this case, Season 2, Episode 11, The Sweetest Sting. Bzzz. I don't know. I wasn't too impressed with this one. What about you? I think the idea is cool, but honestly, it was a little depressing. Yeah. Um, and I, before I forget, I want to mention that this guy who was the, the bee keep, e evil beekeeper was a main character in the original Chris, or what's it called? Black Christmas from the 70s. So that was also filmed up in Canada. So the show being filmed in Canada, the guy is <laughs> Has based... Has a lot of Canadian actors? <laughs> hey, how's about it? Wow. The guy is based in Canada, so he's filming a show in Canada. But uh, would you, who, who would you like to start the talking about this? Well, I guess I can do a quick synopsis. Um, kind of starts out with this honey person putting jars of honey in a car on the side of a desolate road very desolate road and the guy comes up and i guess this isn't the best road for business he's like no nah, but it's okay whatever and um okay. he's, the guy in the car driving up to, that notices the guy putting the ah oh, this is just really twisted so the beekeeper's putting away the honey in his car and the driver coming up the, the desolate road offers to buy some honey and the beekeeper puts some honey on his jacket but still offers him a taste and it's pretty well, good Well it's honey. supposed to be like a mistake that yeah, he like, accidentally oops. put it on the jacket but we I, I knew instantly that oh there must be a reason. Oops. And then uh, the, 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 the person coming up the road you know pretty much likes the honey and he's Seeing the beekeeper putting on the beekeeper hat, Ooh, what's that for? And the, whatever that's called, the the mesh, you know, the hat with the mesh that hangs over your face. So it protects him. The beekeeper hat it just protects him from being stung. Well, anyway, he takes this case out, and all these bees attack the the, the guy on the road that was gonna buy the honey. And Stings him to death. Yeah. And then the next scene. There's an old man, older man, being put into this barn location, comfortable chair it looks like, and the guy's like, oh, you'll never be the same after this, and puts honey on his hands. You should say that this is the same guy who just killed someone with the bees. Yeah, the That's beekeeper. doing this to this guy, so we're like, oh wow, two, two, two kills deaths? in a row? Yeah. But maybe I'll take it from here. Yes, please. We're at rescue you. <laughs> I'm so fumbling. he puts his hands through this, I don't know, part of this room into another room and bakes it. Contraption. Makes it so his hands can't come out and puts the honey on his hands and lets the bees go, you know, on the other side of the wall where his hands are and the bees, you know, start to sting him. At this point, we're still thinking it's going to be like a second kill, but, you know, he's, yeah. oh, he's like, oh, uh, uh, looks like he's dying. I think blood comes out of his mouth and, and eyes and ears. Turns out. He doesn't die, and he's he becomes the the guy from the beginning who was gonna buy the honey on the side of the road. Was gonna buy the honey, so he's basically younger and a different body, and and so on different and so life. forth. So that's the premise of this movie. I think it happens twice in the course of this episode. There's only two kills, and then, as always, most often is the case, the the you know the bad guy dies as well. So. Technically, there's three kills. Two kills and one death. Two evil kills and one... Death of the killer. Yes, there we go. So, um, yeah, I mean, we. I guess it's kind of repetitious because of the fact we see the same thing kind of, as, as, in essence, happen twice. Mm -hmm. And what ends up happening is, you know, this evil guy from uh, Black Christmas, he's not evil in that movie, <laughs> but this Canadian actor, he... Um, he tells the first victim, or the first uh, transformation person, that he has to make a kill so he could have honey. 
Yeah, basically, he doesn't. The people that agree to do this for eternal life or youth or whatever, they don't understand that they're gonna. Yeah, we become don't have vigilantes. To, yeah, this guy's you know this guy who does it for him is gonna come back and ask him to kill people for him. Can't remember why for bodies because the the bees need the bodies for the honey. Oh, okay. they're like they're like vampires. They produce bees. they produce like honey infused with blood so it's like blood honey and the people who get you know this service from this guy you know older people that get the younger body and stuff they have to keep drinking this blood honey in order to stay young so this guy from you know black christmas can the evil guy in this the episode can blackmail them into doing whatever he wants by you know saying well if you don't do you you got to do this to have the blood honey to keep because you they, young they and alive. get old really quickly yeah. after like a couple days or a couple weeks depending on how much honey they eat i guess so i guess my main i guess well you know maybe one of my main is problems with this episode is just the fact that we see this same kill. scenario scenario play out twice and it's just like why do we need to see it play out twice and the second one is involves this married couple and this guy close to retirement and that kind of goes wrong see that the first one kind of goes right where the guy's all happy you know mm -hmm. after he gets into the younger body but the second one kind of goes wrong and i guess maybe that's the reason why we see two because we see one goes right and, and we can he's... see that this one they don't always go right the yeah. second one's wrong and the, the widow is is all sad kind of depressing the... episode well, because the second body, the retired the guy close to retirement, takes over his boss's body, and the boss is reaching out to the widow's wife, which is technically still his wife, you know, trying to comfort her. And she's like, oh, if you wanted to comfort me, why did you fire my husband from your company? And, you know, it was all about kind of revenge. And then... uh I, I, I guess the second victim of the bees just couldn't be uh, comforted. And he's like, I, I want... Well, the beekeeper gives the, the curious goods card to the new executive, the retired person that becomes the head honcho of the office. And he says, I, the bees need blood. I want you to kill these people. And he kind of knew something was fishy at that point. And, well, I guess they had an idea of what they were looking for in this episode. What What is the cursed item? Oh, a little beehive thing, you know, a little area where they can make honeycomb in and thrive. So, I get the cursed item was this actual beehive thing. A portable beehive made with glass. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty cool. And then they did this Egyptian thing where the Egyptians believed that honey could keep you young. And I'm thinking that's probably why King Tut was buried with jars of honey, thinking he'd come back to life. But that's just my theory. Um, I don't know, just kind of underwhelming. I can't kind of even depressing. remember. Yeah, oh, okay, I, I understand. So Evil Bee Guy, towards the end, you know, because people keep coming around asking... Uh, you know, from Curious Goods asking about this hive, this cursed item hive. So he, the bad guy ends up wanting to make the second guy with the widowed wife, you know, basically kill the three people from Curious Goods. But and he ends up just being like so old and frail that he just comes to kill the bad beekeeper guy and screw it. Screw the blackmail. It ain't working this time, buddy. Right. Well, the blackmail was... he He was purposely put in this high position so he could get more pricier victims that would pay more and more for the honey. So maybe it was monetary. Well, yeah, because he took his pension to do the transformation. The no, pension the insurance. Got the insurance got, something got transferred over. So he's not doing it for free. He gets money out of it, but I guess the more powerful the people, the more money they have and the more money he has in the end because he's got an unlimited supply to the blood honey because he's the beekeeper but the second victim just kind of like he said was old and kind of wanted to go back to his wife and didn't like his new life he was all depressed about it 
And he's like, well, I can't promise you happiness. You just wanted a new body, so you got one. And he's like, you get what you pay for kind of deal. And at the end, what happens, honey? <laughs> honey. <laughs> I guess I'm not, that's funny. I guess I'm not exactly sure what you're referring to. Well, the what happens with the old young executive and the beekeeper? I already said it, didn't I? He kills, he shoots the beekeeper, didn't I? Or? Oh, yeah. Well, and I can't the remember beekeeper what I said. I'm tired. opened up the the case, was trying to get the guys from the Curious Goods. So the bees are originally chasing after Jack, Mickey, and Ryan. And then I'll, he you kind of close the door and you see the the second victim, which is the new executive with the shotgun facing towards the beekeeper, and the beekeeper's like holding honey in his hands. And he's like, oh crap. Because the first shot actually <laughs> shot honey from the cabinet, and the backsplash went on the beekeeper's clothing, and the second shot, I think, kind of shot the beekeeper to make sure he couldn't move. And all the bees backtracked and went after the beekeeper. It should also be said, this is the first time, I think, in either of these two seasons where they actually got, like, a second car, this little French frickin' orange... It almost looked like a of, beetle. Well, it's a French vehicle from France, mm -hmm. from, like, the... Probably the same era as the, the, the Mercedes-Benz, maybe, like, the 60s or 50s or something, but I guess it... I'm, like... Because in this episode, like... They were all going Mar in different directions. Mar Mar Marshak, Marshak is doing his driving around in the Benz, doing his own investigating, and then Ryan and Mickey are in this French vehicle, and it turns out it's uh, Rashid's car, and we haven't heard Rashid since like the like the, the since the end of the first season, beginning of the second. So it's like, are, are we going to see Rashid again, <laughs> or are we just going to hear about his car? <laughs> so. My 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 rating for this it it you know as much as it's like depressing I thought it was competent enough for me to just be one notch from a thumb full thumb so I'll be like you know in between you know somewhere around ten and eleven thumb positions so I, I thought the concept was good but the only reason it's not full thumb is just because of the depressing aspect of the second character who you know, with the being fired and pension gone and the widow is just depressing, so. Yeah, oh, and then as he's dying and his, his well, because he comes out as the executive and calls out her name, Jojo, and she's, like, turning around and she's holding who she thinks is the executive and he kind of transforms into the person he started out as, so it, it's like... She saw it was him all and, along. And he dies in his in her arms, and it was just kind of sad. So I'm just going to give it a half thumb. I mean, so it was you, a good concept. Your thumb is on the nine. My thumb is solid on the nine. Maybe not a solid on the nine. It was just sad. It was sad. But hopefully the next one will be a funner one. It's called The Playhouse, if my memory serves. We'll see if uh, yes. Pee Wee's in this one. <laughs> the play. I'm going to guess it's a dollhouse. I'm going to rip off her guess it's a dollhouse. <laughs> or just a playhouse in the backyard for kitties. You know, oh. it's a smaller little house. Yeah, like a playhouse. Yeah, like uh, a playhouse. Like a playhouse. A backyard <laughs> playhouse, like a play school. I'm going to guess a backyard kitty playhouse. I'm going to stick with a dollhouse. Well... We will find out and come at you next with the uh, next time rather with <laughs> with our thoughts on the playhouse. Thanks for listening. See you next time. <laughs>